two with another dimension on there, so one. And then another dimension, <laughs> 0.25, so 4.25, I think I'm going to win. I don't know if your math is right, I thought it was, was 3.25, but that was good. This week we're joined by Matthew Moldenhauer as we go back into the summer of the stout. This is episode 115 of the Malting Hour. What's the half sound the hops got yeast and speech? This is the Malting Hour where we talk about our drink and tell you what we think every other week. And if we get drunk, well, we might slur our speech. Got the gift of gab, the friends we wish you had. Join us for a drink, join us for a laugh. Time is never wasted, where you getting wasted? The Malting Hour here, people, people take your places. People, people take your places. Welcome to the Malting Hour. I am one of your hosts, Tony Olick, joined always with Brandon Winninger. <laughs> <laughs> to my left, Danny Polly. To his left, Matthew Moldenhauer. Matthew, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Hey, man, thanks for being here. Well, you know, we were just going to drink beers, so. We decided, why not just record it? You decided. It was a great idea. It was a good suggestion. You said, why not? We can either meet at a bar. Hey, keep it down over there. We can either keep it at a bar. School's <laughs> yeah. school's We can either keep, uh, meet up at a bar. We can either keep up at a bar or record a podcast. And it was a good idea. Yeah, I think I only have friends based on making it profitable. <laughs> hey, you brought you brought barrel aged beers. I'm going to say profitable. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. fucking Monday. They, yeah. Monday. Danny, welcome back. Thank you. Two, Two in a row. Three, this is three technically three weeks in a row now. Yeah, Foster actually asked me. He was like, again? Don't worry about it, man. <laughs> That's what you should have said. Check it out. We're good. Okay? Dad's going out for a little bit. You'll be in bed. It's cool. Yeah. I'll be here in the morning. Just Probably listen to the now. podcast. Yeah. You can hear my voice there. <laughs> <laughs> and some, Remember that guy, Tony? He'll always be mean to Dad. He'll keep listening to the podcast <laughs> and he'll know words like aqueous. Yes. Mm, this is very aqueous. Uh, what did we say we're going to call this? Uh, Summer of the Stout. Dark Knight, Summer of the Stout. Summer of the Stout, right? Summer of the Stout, 2023, The Dark Knight. How's that? That's good. Cool. This would have been Let's a see if good... I the name. I mean, what's the temperature outside? It's still 80 fucking degrees. Jeez. But if we didn't live in the flight path to try to do another outdoor one in the fire pit... pit yeah, we all live together, by the way. Uh, since 2023 has happened, we all now live at Brandon's house. We just decided, <laughs> let's bring all the families together. Uh, and we all live under the flight path. It's, but this is great. It's, it's all for the podcast. Is that what they call yeah, it? It's, yeah. kind of, it's all for the podcast. We, we convinced our families we all need to live together for a podcast about beer. I'm pretty sure there has to be a podcast commune. <laughs> I'm going to look that up after this. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so we're going to drink some stouts. And the first one that we're drinking is one that I brought all the way from my trip to Arkansas. What's up, Dan? What's going on, Dan? No. Is this bike rack? Yeah, it's bike rack. It is uh, Medusa, which is a barrel-aged imperial step. Dan, Medusa. tell us about it. All right, 11.7% ABV. What? <laughs> Weak. <laughs> After right. spending six months in bourbon barrels, this year's Medusa imperial stout is ready for the world. At 11.7% ABV, you'll be smitten as smooth tendrils of chocolate and espresso snake their way through strong oak character. With slightly boozy bite of tobacco on the finish, it's beautiful, powerful, dangerous, and decadent. It's all but mythical. Medusa, taste the legend. That sounds like a description of me. <laughs> <laughs> when I used to smoke. <laughs> um, and a tobacco finish. So first thoughts, um, I, I, I didn't know that this was coffee. Um, and I was getting this weird bitterness. Uh, now I know what it is. Um, and it tastes like... And I, I don't want to knock the beer, but it, it tastes like a like when you have a like a coffee beer and the coffee starts to turn a little bit. Interesting. Um, and it's getting more on the green side. Um, mm. It's kind of how it's coming off to me a little bit. I, I get what you're saying with that. I think that might be more of the espresso where you're using a bean that you're doing really hot. Yeah. Supposedly going over that and getting more of the acid because it was extremely bitter. I'm not getting as much of that vegetal, which is usually the case of like coffee beers getting older and mm-hmm. turning. Is for me that's where you get a lot of that green pepper. Okay. And I'm not getting the green pepper. I'm just getting that like real acidic bite. Yeah. I don't know if I like that though. I Dan and I were talking about this before we started recording. So they said notes of espresso, and then we had coffee. But then they... 
not sure if there actually is coffee in this. I think there might be. I think there is. I think there is because when I opened yeah. it and started pouring it, like the the first, I could smell coffee. I smell like you know coffee. I smelled whatever. cough. <laughs> no, I smelled coffee, but I didn't know that there was coffee yeah. in it, and I was like, oh, that's. I mean, because th- th- my thought was maybe it's just the the grains, like <clears throat> roasty grains. You can get that, like you know, strong coffee, yeah. but uh, acidity that is standing out to me because I am very sensitive to. Acid. Yeah. Sometimes I get a little heartburn. <laughs> I don't get heartburn from, or like, you know, any type of burn from barrel aged beers. I'm getting a little bit from this. The only I got other your tongues one, over there if you need sir. <laughs> the only other thing I think that would be the acid, my first thought was that Actual it was, acid. well, carbonic <laughs> acid, very highly carbonated. Um, but then, like, when you gave me the pour, I didn't get much head. So I wasn't thinking that it really might be, but it definitely does feel like a lot of little bubbles on the palate, so that could also just be sure. very highly carved, even though you got it in a crawler. Yeah, so. which which was actually you guys heard it, cracked it open. It was still sounded pretty like these were sitting in the refrigerator ready to go. They didn't fill this up for me, so I don't know if there's I don't know if there's a, I don't know if there's a difference of like filling crawlers you know to go or running it like a canning line. I, yeah. I feel like that's maybe what they did with it, some of these. It depends on the kind of crawler that you have. You have one of the automatic sealers. It'll be different in how it does versus there's some old school ones where they just still fill it, put a can on top. Yeah, if we take that's samples to someone, yeah, we can we can just fill something straight off of the faucet, bring it over to our canning line, bring it to someone. Why don't you do that for me? Because we can everything. Just give me some samples sometimes. I brought you beer to drink before this. What do you think that was? Touche. <laughs> uh, I I'm also getting well, Dan. Before we get to you to see what you think, Dan. By the way, if anybody hears any buzzing, there is one lone fly flying around here like a little asshole, and you might hear him because these mics are pretty good. I'm getting also notes of. Uh, I think I wasn't here all day. All <laughs> until we showed up. That's why you had the the barricade in front of That's, your basement door. The fly door. Flies out. <laughs> the old fly stopper. <laughs> there's like a, there's like a note of like vanilla. Uh, like marshmallowy, not like sweet marshmallow, but like maybe toasted. Like I don't know. There's a vanilla there to me. I get it. This is completely off topic, but when you said toasted, so we went to Rev on Friday. I like when we go off topic. Um, dude, they have a a s'mores what uh, s'mores pie with a a death tar uh, a death death tar um, marshmallow <laughs> meringue like on top. That they toast, mm-hmm. fucking fantastic. That sounds really good. It was. It Did you was, get a whole pie to bring for the uh, no episode tonight? No, but I should. The baking hour yeah. with your host Brandon. When we, when we do the food show, finally we'll do coming soon for our Patreon. The baking hour. It'll be a Brandon. lot of wings and like <laughs> smoked Clark, meats. Clark's <laughs> confections. Ooh, you hear that, Clark? Clark You're Clark, signed up. Clark can't cook shit. <laughs> we are that's coming not, up with segments. Ooh, that sounds like a fucking challenge. Uh, he makes the, ice cream though. That's true. Now it's good. Mine, but it's good. Your bourbon county ice cream and your uh, uh, the, the, the 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 Biscoff. Oh, Those yeah. are my favorites. Oh, yeah. You got to get that uh, Biscoff spread, man. It's no the best thing in the world. Dan, what do you think of this beer? I actually really like it. I mean, you guys are like talking about it. And I'm kind of like, yeah, I get the acidity a little bit, but it's not like a. It's like a like a bitter coffee, not like a sour beer acidity, to me. Um, but it reminds me of like, it's going to sound crazy cause I was getting a vanilla too. And before you even said that, it's like you have like a tiramisu and you like just scrape off like a titch of the icing with the espresso powder on I'm top. Sorry, a titch? A titch. Hmm. Just like a little. Aqueous titch. Aqueous titch. All right. I'm just remembering all the words you're teaching. <laughs> and then you eat that. And so you, I, that's kind of what it tastes like to me. Like I, I really I like, like that. I, the, the version, the, the variant I had of this when I was in Arkansas had, I think coconut in it. It was really good. Like, and I felt like it. I also it was also the last stop of the three or four breweries that I went to, and I this was the first like pour that I had there because I just did tasters at all these breweries. I felt like it was. I remember it being like a little heavier, maybe a little thicker. It's light. The body on this is light. It's not like light light. It's it's I should say it's light for a barrel aged stout. In today's standards, absolutely. Yeah. It it's a good stout. Like I feel I'd like to have this non barrel aged. I feel like that's, to me, and I don't mean that as like a, a, a knock at the barrel aged version. I feel like it's a compliment when I say it, at least. Like when I have a barrel aged beer that I, that I don't know what like the the base beer tastes like, I feel like that is, you know, like I want more of it, basically. I just want to know what it's like without the barrel. Because I do get like 
oakiness and like said tobacco finish like in my head it reminded me of there's this one wine in north carolina that i've tried it's called uh cape fear blood wine and they had mentioned how it has like a tobacco finish I'm like what the fuck are you talking about and this was when i first got into brewing beer so i was really interested because they were talking about the process of wine and all the flavors that go in there and so this guy's explaining everything and when he said the tobacco thing i was like that's weird and then i had this in my head like this is what tobacco tastes like the first sip I took of this, the aftertaste I got, reminded me of that wine. There's something in there. So I guess that's the tobacco type flavor. I don't think so much like, I think it's like a pipe tobacco type thing, like a sweet type of, <laughs> this hunting of the fly is getting real exciting here. But that's what I'm, that's what I'm taking away from this. Yeah, typically tobacco is definitely a verbiage that people use on uh, earthy notes. <laughs> Brandon flicked the fly. I was like, I'm going to get hit in the face. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it, you flicked it into the windowsill over there, and it flew around. It was like, utopias, I'm, I'm free. Sorry, go ahead. Continue, please. <laughs> We're still going to give a yeah. play-by-play of what's going on with the fly. We just need it to drown in a beer. <laughs> we don't yeah. Uh, but yeah, tobacco tends to be, if you look at like the flavor flavor wheel, tends to be in the earthy, uh, earthy spice tobacco, uh, those kind of notes where you get... Kind of that really rich, woodsy kind of characteristic. Uh, but for me, like tobacco, I think the issue for me a lot of times when people say tobacco, I think most people immediately start thinking tobacco and smoke and rock beer, uh, which doesn't have to be whatsoever. Right. No, I, because I feel like with Roush beer too, like I don't feel like I get smokiness. I, I never get like t- tobacco is not something that I first go to, but definitely like a wood smokiness or like, you know, something different. Um, but I've had the tobacco experience before, both in like bourbons and and wines and, and some beers. But like that, that with Rosh beer is complete, completely different to me, at least. When I hear tobacco, I think of the artist tobacco, who's also Black Moth Super Rainbow. Sure. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Brandon, thanks. Bud. How many? <laughs> how many snakes heads are you giving this beer? I thought we were gonna say like fucking mosquitoes or flies. Oh, uh, that's for later. I will say... I'm going to go... Were you about to start singing the Star Spangled Banner? I will say to this beer... <laughs> um, I'm going to go 3-8. Hmm. I think it's a fair uh, assessment there. Uh, Matthew, how many snakeheads are you giving this? Yeah, I think that was actually fair. I was thinking around 3-7-5, which for me, I've been listening to you guys. Like, It's always hard because... I think Absolutely. you guys tend to be at like that four and you have like very nuanced between like four, four, two, four, two, five. Four, four is we enjoy it enough that we would keep drinking it, I feel like. See, to me, that's like a three. Yeah, I, I, I agree. That's how it used to be for when like I think we had this conversation like Clark and I had talked about it. And maybe all, all of us had talked about it on the show that like my check ins of beers on untapped, like if I'm not putting a four, I feel like I'm like, I don't like this beer. Yeah. I'm saying, okay. I, don't, I don't care for the beer that much. Because that's where I'm like, yeah. I call it a three, I feel like I'm an asshole. No, I, I, I'm I, still drinking. A, like a, three, a three is still good. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's just, I feel like it's preference at this point. It's yeah. a, that's this is the middle of the road right there. Which, three, and I feel like three eight is pretty good. Like, you, you know, that's, that's it's higher from the middle. You know? Yeah, and this is actually definitely one of those barrel aged stouts that I wouldn't mind having after a couple of others because it's a little bit thinner. It has, that could have kind of be like that ashiness, dryness, yeah. that, like you can enjoy this a few deep and the dryness is something we didn't really mention there isn't like a strong sweetness to this maybe dan was going to say it but i i didn't really go back to him yeah so that's right <sighs> all right all right so dan dan how many sneak heads are you giving this i'm gonna go i quite enjoyed it i'm gonna go four two five Ooh. Ooh. i really liked it i like the uh you, got, you were talking about the wine and stuff like that and it kind of i was getting like a tannic note at the end of it like a red wine and that is part of the dryness that you guys were talking about too. But it's, I like it. <laughs> uh, I this isn't the wine hour. <laughs> we could we could do an episode on wine. Um, I think I don't know. I'm kind of now that we just had the conversation about, you know, the rating. I'm I'm gonna stay with where I, I go now with like four of like. <laughs> uh, but I think I'm gonna go f- just straight four, straight four on this. I like it. I would have it again. Um, like if it was available to us, like it was on the, like when it released it, like, yeah, I, I'd get it. I don't know if I'd be like, 
Os- Osner uh, reserve it, but if someone else had it and it was so, maybe I should go maybe like a three seven five. I don't know, guys. Where do I go with that? Well, that's what I, with what I just said. To me, I think that's also what's difficult is where you think about where you're drinking it. If this were also a price point that you can get Dragon's Milk, and I could get a four pack of this for absolutely you know, sixteen bucks. Yeah, I would drink this. I don't remember this and being go back for it. incredibly expensive, by the way. I don't think so. You know, I'm going to go with right now. I'm staying at the four. That's the way I feel about it at this moment, right here with you guys, enjoying this crowd. And thank you, by the way, because I've been wanting to crack this open and share and drink it. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for, yeah, thanks for sharing. Dan, your beer is up next. That it is. I'm, I'm pretty happy that I've got my own water tonight, guys. I'm just going to throw that out there. Normally, I don't. And we're like, Dan, hit me up with some water. And you're like, no way, this is my bottle that I brought for me. <laughs> That's was, I wasn't making fun of you. That's just how I hear you speak. COVID, so you man. <laughs> I'm, pouring, I'm pouring motor oil. That was a lot. Oh, I mean, there's going to be more left over. That is motor oil. Holy shnikes. So uh, this is from no, Bar- no, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barclay Brewing Company. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it is Dimensions of Time 10. Mm. Their maple bourbon stout. So it is... So it says, Dimensions of Time is our barrel-aged imperial stout blends for the Dimensions of Time Barrel Project membership. These beers set between 13 to 20 months in a variety of barrels. For the blend, we have four maple bourbon barrels, Old Fit 7-year and Stag Junior. Each variant of DOT is meant to inspire thoughtfulness to the complexity and nuance or dimensions of the beer over time. And did I say 15%? We should have started with this. Actually, if we started with this, really would have devalued added, the other. The, yeah, it would have like I think it would have knocked it down a little. This bit. is definitely more towards that modern stout. Uh, so I was joking around about the motor oil, but then I'm swirling around in my glass. And oh, it she's does, thick. It does my <laughs> it does my my favorite thing about big stouts like this. It's like if you poured soy sauce so- or like teriyaki glaze into a glass and then poured it out. Yeah. Uh, it leaves that like nice like deep brown. But let's rich be honest. brown on it. Tony never throws out teriyaki glaze. He just throws it back. Just Damn right. <laughs> Actually, I pour it onto the meat as I'm cooking, which is what I did yesterday. I made some uh, teriyaki. Those uh, looked good. They were very good. I did. I need to make um, another sauce because that uh, chili oil, honey chili oil, mm-hmm. and the hot honey, there is no heat on there whatsoever. But it was very tasty, so I want to make a sauce with more of that to add. add I got to it. it. You did? Teriyaki time with Tony. Go on. Finally, man, we did it! Oh, I can't wait for all these Patreons. <laughs> no, you gotta say Tony's teriyaki time. That's how it's his all teas. Even better, P cubed. Fucked it up, Dan. But great idea, so I'm yeah. not gonna be mad. It's just an idea, man. Um, Dan, you brought this. Oh man, let's start with you, baby. Right. So this is thick. <laughs> yeah, and it's pretty sweet. Yeah. I don't know why I laughed at that. That was, that was a good description. It's not like too sweet. Like sometimes you have that sweetness where it kind of like. Makes the back of your cheeks like clinch. It's not like I don't know if I'd call this. I don't know what that is, but I think I understand what you mean. <laughs> I'm trying. I don't like sweet <laughs> stuff, so maybe it's just me. Probably. Um, I'm trying to think. What do you call pastry stout? I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd call this a pastry stout sweet. No, but it's sweet it's, it's close. It's bordered. It's close. Yeah, bordered. I've had some pastry stouts. I mean, let's no, be honest. I get what you guys are saying. I, this is definitely still a pastry stout. I just think it's a very well done where you still have balance and yes. in, in beer. I think there's some places that are. I think, especially in American brewing, you saw it a few years ago with the hops. You saw it a few years ago with the stouts. The people who you throw everything at the wall and then you kind of work back. I'll tell you this: the Hubbard's Cave pastry stouts, the coffee cakes, and all that. I mean, that I used to during the pandemic. It was great because I was like, first time I'm trying it, I'm like, oh my god! And I would sit in front of the fire, the original summer of the stout, and drink it, and I'd enjoy it. And then I think a year or two later, I tried to do it again, and I got halfway through, and I was like, I need water, and I wish someone else was here to help me finish this. Now, I still finished it, but it took a very long time. You glutton. Priorities. Damn right. That's why I look the way I do, baby. Um, I really do like it, and um, I feel, as Matthew was saying, I feel like you still get like the roastiness of the stout on it. You get the barrel character, and I feel like it's like more than just like bourbon. I don't know. It's a kind of complex beer it's not just like one note of anything i i agree i feel like the maple that i'm getting is not like "Mm, here's sweet maple syrup it's like you have like waffles or pancakes and that aftertaste in your mouth of syrup you know if like real maple syrup that's like the lingering in the back for me this would be good in a ice cream well well, that too but in cupcake dude in like a waffle batter waffle batter yeah 
Okay, that that makes sense because I'm rereading it and it's saying maple bourbon barrels. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's not that. That's right. That's what I'm yeah, saying. It's like, not it's, that sweetness. It's, it's nice though. Like that's the. It's sitting there because you don't need a lot of maple to really actually get that flavor and nuance. No. CBS was the one maple stout that I really enjoyed because it was pretty fucking sweet, but it had like a nice maple characteristic to it. Ever since then, it's been hard for me to like enjoy a beer that said it had maple in it. Well, I, mean, I even feel like the the last iterations of CBS that I bought were nowhere near up to the par of like the original. What's his founders is garbage now. <clears throat> well, yeah, you that bottle back. But that, but that original run, man, like, and I think you had one of the ones, didn't? Didn't you have one of the original ones when I brought it? Like, we had it at <sighs> yes, you brought it over. Yes, you brought we it over brewing. when we were brewing. Yeah, because we were. Was that when we were doing our Wootstout clone? Possibly, yeah. Which, by the way, I still have a giant champagne bottle of Woot Stout that you gave me. Oh, yeah. We got a drink. Three liter again. bottle. Should have brought that for tonight. What, when's that episode? I don't know, but you're on it because we're going to need like <laughs> nine people for that one. I really like this. I just poured a little bit more. Sorry, guys. Yeah. To me, this is exactly where I think the industry's doing well. I, I don't know this brewery, but they're hitting basically everything that modern brewers are trying to hit with those big stouts. Uh, to your point... I think opposite. This is that kind of beer that I would not want to try uh, non-barrel aged because to get Agreed. this kind of body and flavor and everything else, you need that time in barrels. Yeah. You need so much more of everything else. There are def- that- yeah, there's definitely specific beers that when you're trying, to be like, ooh, what's that going to taste like if it wasn't barrel aged? This, to me, I'd be like, if I didn't have this barrel aged, I'd be like, I'm drinking like syrup. Yeah. It'd probably be pretty bitter, too. Yeah. Oh, motherfucker's back. Ooh, yeah. the fly's back. What's going to happen? Brandon! What do you think about this beer? Um, I really enjoy it. I, I do like the maple that's coming through. I love the body on it. Um, I'm getting like... Yeah, you're the first person, by the way, to really talk about the body. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting like, you know, it's not it's not to the, to the level of like those really thick pastry stouts that we have. It's really on the cusp of it, though. Um, sweetness is very kind of mild um, in comparison to, you know, sweeter beers. But like, I, I'm loving the maple. I'm loving like the... The, the oakiness that's coming through from the barrel. Um, it's all, like, everything is very slight, but plays very well together. You know, there's some, like, little bit of chocolatiness in there, and, you know, hint of smokiness. Uh, I like it. Would you say that you're loving it, ba 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 Would you say there's a lot of dimensions to this beer? Well, there's, there's it's a multiverse <laughs> of beer. Oh, man, that was three, like, nice little, uh, damn, we just need something from you. Uh, <laughs> that's all right. Dan, Where, where's the cricket? I mean, fly. Dan, yeah. <laughs> Dan what was the other one that we had? Uh, wasn't it an after the final pour? Or was it a uh, like Christmas episode? Or? It was with uh, it was with Shalanda and Nick. Oh yeah, was it the hundredth episode? Yeah. Oh, I brought that. Oh, that's right. Um, but it, that was there. I don't remember what number it was, but that was the one that didn't really have like adjuncts. Like it was straight different bourbon barrels. That wasn't the one we were blending, right? There was a beer at one point we were blending with. You bourbon. guys had a Linnea or Alinea or no? Yeah. What was it? Was uh, the one that used to be th- was when I first had the it. Foreign it was exchange like one. Th- yeah. You guys were. I think you guys were blending that. Was it? I don't know. We were adding bourbon to one beer. It was very good. I don't really remember the hundredth episode. It was a lot of fun. So Nick we, and did I did really th- we did a hundredth episode. Yeah, we're like one fifteen, sixteen right now. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I can hear myself coming through the, the headphones there. That was crazy. Um, Daniel, how many dimensions are you going to give this beer? You're going to have me go first. Uh, Think about the Beastie Boys. I am going to go. So. Again, not a big sweet guy. I think this is really well done for what it is and for a maple beer. I'm going to go four, five on this one. Ooh. Thank you. By the way, thank you for bringing this as well. That's two of these that I've had now that I yeah. probably wouldn't have I, had otherwise. They're very I didn't good. say this is, uh, so I had a buddy that was part of the program and we ended up splitting some of the bottles, but you had to be like part of a membership thing. Yeah, I think that was part of the description. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really good. This is like the second one we've had and I only hope to try more. Matthew. Are you saying not everyone can get it? Five stars. <laughs> <Yeah>. Scarcity. <laughs> this is the best meter I've ever had. Uh, how many no. dimensions are you giving this? I was thinking four a little bit before. This is definitely really well done. Um, I'm so happy to see it in a 750. Like It's a perfect share with between four people. And... I was just going to say, like this is per- there's a little bit left, too, and I poured just a tiny bit more into my glass, but you know, it's the type of beer that 
enough there for everybody to have just like a little bit more once it warms up if we want. So yeah, and it's definitely one that you would at the end of the night you'd go back to and go, yeah, that one really was nice. Yeah. So, I'm sorry. Did you give a number? I missed it. I said four. I missed it. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Four point one two three. Ooh. <laughs> I'm just gonna round that down to a four point one two. Brandon, how many dimensions are you giving this? I'm gonna go with two. Many choices. Two stars. Damn. Two. With another dimension on there, so a one. And then another dimension, <laughs> point two five. So four point two five. I think I'm gonna win. I don't know if your math was right. I thought it was three point two five, but that was good. Yeah. No, I said <laughs> two. I said two plus oh, and one, then and then plus another dimension oh, and a two point five. Okay, yeah, you're right. Two five. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> I'm going with Dan on this four and a half dimensions. Uh, I really like it. I yeah, it's it's everything that you guys said. There's there's all those things about it that I really enjoy. I I. I do you think, like you said, Matthew, at the end of the night, this is going to be one that I remember? I'm like, oh man, that was really nice. It's really well done. It's it's up there with some of the other barrel aged adjuncted stouts, and with maple, and a maple, you know, bourbon barrel aged. Like that's, I just I really like it. I really like it. I'm, I I might even you know what? I'm gonna go four six. I'm going four six. Fuck off. Four point six dimension. Nobody cares. Jesus um, Christ, Brandon. That, that point whatever. Uh, man, Brandon's getting is there a little mad. That's a little spicy. <laughs> Brandon's getting a little mad at Tony um, before the break. What's going on? Uh, what I was going to say is, we've never... Have you ever brewed with maple? No. And in fact, what I wanted to do was... Does anybody know the, the root that you use that gives off an actual maple flavor? Sarsaparilla. No. <laughs> we used a mushroom. Sassafras. Right. Uh, oh, no, I know. But there mushroom? is... But there, I, I, I'll, I'll have to look it up. But uh, there is a particular... Because, I mean, maple syrup itself, like, that's just pure sugar. So it's going to dry out. The beer well, yeah, and just fucking. I mean, raise the alcohol. That's fine, but we can teach you. Thanks, buddy. I mean, I know there's ways to do it, but I know there is a way to impart. Uh, there's something else that you can use that does impart like a maple flavor without having to use maple syrup and you know going crazy with your ABV or science with Matthew. I mean, now that you guys got this new fancy production place, seems like you got a lot of free space <laughs> for, some, for some dudes to come and do a collab. Matthew, yeah. Matthew, the fly is on your microphone. Is it? Oh, it's oh. Oh. Uh, is it fenugreek? I hit it. Yes. There it is. Thank you. Yeah, Can welcome. you say that again for everybody? Fenugreek. Yes. That is used in home brewing oh, yeah. to impart uh, a maple flavor. It's used in a lot of bread, too. Mm. Which, if you ever had, it's really good in bread. Oh, I have not. Baking time with Matthew. That doesn't, I mean, that's pretty good, but we got to find something else for, uh, I guess you're part of the, the show now. Anyways, uh, you guys, let's take a break real quick. We've got 20 other beers we're going to get through. It's the Summer of the Stout, a.k.a. Did you say just the Dark Knight or the Dark Knight Rises? Coming back will be the Dark Knight Rises. That's after the break, right? Yeah. We'll be right back.
and we're back. Welcome back, everybody. It's the Summer of the Stout 2023, The Dark Knight Rises, because we're back from the break. And we're going to drink another stout, obviously. Brandon, oh, I, oh Dan's got it, so Dan's going to talk. <laughs> Dan's got it. Oh, Dan's so, oh, Dan's pouring, Dan's pouring. Dan's pouring. What, what, what year is this? This is the 2016 Abyss Reserve, and it is brewed with blackstrap molasses and licorice. Dry. Sorry, my hands on it. Oatmeal. Cherry. Spiced. <laughs> Dried blood. With cherry bark <laughs> and vanilla bean. Twenty-one percent aged in oak bourbon barrels. Twenty-one percent aged in oak wine barrels. And eight percent aged in New Oregon oak barrels. This is seven years old. That is very specific. I'll tell you this: it's seven years old. I wonder if their math is correct. I've had this before. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys right now: swirl around your cup, shake it off a little bit. I know we've drank other things. We've had some water and some a little bit of bourbon uh, in between here, but uh, I need to shake some of this off. <laughs> <laughs> There's a uh, I got a very strong metallic weird taste from my first sip before I did this. I didn't. That's just me, baby. I think I did get it at the very end, like on the. No, like There's a strong bitterness at the end of this. Mm-hmm. Now it's a seven-year-old beer. I was gonna say, let's preface this. We are also gauging this on drinking this beer now, not what it was like in 2016. I do. I'm, I'm pretty sure I might have it checked in on Untapped. You might want to check that. Just not sure. But I do remember really like liking the Abyss series, so I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. I probably gave this very high praise. Um, I think I've had this too before. Actually, what Matthew? What are you thinking about this beer? Yeah, it'd be hard to think about what this was seven years fresh. Um, it is a lot thinner. I think that bitterness you get on then might be a little bit of that cherry. I have a little bit of that bourbon on the back of my palate, which I thought might be the metallic that you were talking about. Metallic's gone now. Yeah, that's why I was like, I think that first sip still might have just been uh, a little bit of that bourbon, but that also could have just been something that came off right away. Yeah, I... Um... I'm kind of struggling with this one a little bit. The bitterness, like you were, you were saying, the, the bitterness might be the cherry. There is like a... Cherry wood. Cherry wood, sorry. Uh, the the bitter... I'm getting like a... Not astringent, but it, it, it is, is hop like... Not hop, but it reminds me of like a hop bitterness mm. that's like in the middle of my tongue that goes from left to right also. And the finish. That's kind of what's standing out. But I will say, when I first take a sip... Mm-hmm. The there is like the barrel flavor. There's a sweetness. There's a fruitiness to it that I really like. It's just the ending of kind of like mm-hmm. it's like bitter chocolate. Actually, that's kind of what it's reminding me of. Like really, really dark chocolate. I'm talking like 85 percent dark cocoa, which I I, have, I will have, preface this. I think this beer is one that somebody gave me that I did not necessarily store myself. Mike. So, whew, I don't know if did it Mike would give have been this a, to you. I don't think I so. I feel like Mike has one of these still. <laughs> it's possible. But I, yeah, but I don't know how it would have been stored, but yeah. What are you saying? So, dude? Tony, you yeah. had the 2014 and 2015 versions. I didn't have the 2016. At least you didn't check it in. Did I give the, what did I do for 2014, 2015? Fours. Fours. And four and a half. Sorry, four and a half for 2015. <laughs> Sounds about right. Sounds about right back then. And you also had the Abyss Rum from 2017. Mm, what did I give that? Four. I'm surprised I didn't give it lower. I'm not a big fan. Really? Of you give something a four? It's crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Old Irving beers are already four point four point two five up to five. I'm just gonna throw that out there just so you guys know. <laughs> Even before I met Matthew, don't go and check my profile. Yeah, I, I I definitely get like a bitter dark chocolate finish on this, kind of fruity up front with a little bit of barrel yeah. or, or like bourbon. It's very fruity up front, which is nice. Which is really nice. It's kind of like. Chocolate, like dark, bitter chocolate covered fruit. But like, just so, I mean, I was kind of trying to look at your check-in, so I might have missed this. But the fruitiness to me is like that, uh, like a like a dark fruit that's kind of been dried a little sure. bit. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, not, like not so much like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe some I wasn't pulling this out because I thought it would be a winner. No, no, no. I don't, I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's bad at all. I'm also, I would say for seven years old... This is a great beer to share to like yeah. talk about. You know what I mean? Like it's not a bad beer. Yeah. Actually, a beer like this, if you had another bottle of this, I think that'd be a fun beer to like bake with or or like make something that has like cocoa or like a dark chocolate 
like a cupcake or a ganache or something like that. I feel like that would make it like chili. You know, what? hold on to the rest of this. Make some chili. Um, does it say that UBV on there? Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm Two sure percent. it does. Somewhere. I just had it on an untapped too, so I couldn't make this. Um, while I'm looking for eleven point one percent. Yeah, eleven point one. Okay. This was bottled on twelve eight sixteen. So bottled at the end of twenty sixteen. Okay, so I'm taking this from someone else, but I think it's a really interesting question with especially the seven seven year old beer is you know, where would you be drinking this? Mm. Obviously, Steal This Beer does this, but, but yeah, like, what, what other reasons would, would you bring this out? Camping, would you bring this out yeah. to cook with? Actually, I feel like camping um, or hanging out in the backyard um, fall or summer. Like, it's a hangout beer. This is a hangout beer. Like, I'm not doing anything specific. It's more just like, oh, hey, guys, let's let's crack this open. Let's try this. Let's Let's drink this. And maybe we're, like, grilling. Like beef, the beef grilling type of, yeah. of of beer. Yeah, I like that. This this reminds me of a, a beer I'd open with uh, friends on a like a Sunday afternoon, watching a random movie that we haven't seen in a really long time. Tommy Boy. <laughs> yes, yes. That, this would be perfect. Something that you know all the the quotes for, all yeah. the words for, and you're just like Brandon and I were ready to just do open a something full dumb. fucking like remake of what are we what were we gonna do we were gonna do the tommy boy podcast oh. where we just like have the entire script and just kind of go through have it. enough people to do each it just have it just have it be as a radio program and mm-hmm. split it up into episodes there's something we can do i think we can still do that without totally sounds like a teen line hey shout out to kevin Gagan. teen line check it out teen line.bandcamp.com that's t-i-n-e l-i-n-e dot bandcamp.com from 2020 um <laughs> I, I when you said sunday afternoon <laughs> Um, I thought football too. Like if, if the four of us got together to watch football, this would be a good beer to like crack open. And, and if like, you and know, it would be amazing because we would definitely not watch the Packers. Although if it was a Bears Packers game, that'd be a yeah. lot of fun to watch with these two jamokes. Oh right? yeah. I think we would have to drink something in misery. Are we getting together for the first game now? Is that what we were saying? The Bears, Bears, the four of us getting together, watching this game and just uh, find another bottle of Abyss uh, 2016. I think we all pick something that we think would go well with the football game. Cool. I'll get not cheese. It's fucking fly. <laughs> I'm I'm go the, uh, cheese. I fucking love cheese. <laughs> what's that? What's the brewery that's out west that does the Sleepy Bear? Oh, uh, Sleepy Bear. Uh, oh shit! Um, I know what you're talking about. Oh, God. Oh, Sleepy Bear. Don't fucking do that, man. <laughs> Don't fucking do that. You know what? We'll get something something uh, that's infected and smells like rotten cheese. That's what we'll get for you guys uh, for for the Packers. How's that? Workforce. Yeah, that's Sleepy Bears, actually. You drink something Very and good. tribute to the Jets. Oh, yeah, Jets. So we we'll drink all, some from New York. We're all uh, Packer quarterbacks go to die. <laughs> <laughs> and then, right after that, well, after they, go to, they go to Minnesota. Season. Who, actually, so who is the, they don't have a starting quarterback yet, do they? Or, who? who? The Packers? Packers? Jordan, Jordan Love. Love. Jordan Love. It's Love yeah. season, baby. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm excited. The dick of I'm excited to see how, how Jordan Love does. I really am. Jordan. Because... The Packers know one thing for sure, and that's picking franchise quarterbacks. When they, they had Ron Wolf. I'm sorry? When they had Ron Wolf. Who the fuck's that? Like that I was the draft. GM who... You don't know anything about the Packers. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my dad and my sister love them, not me. They used to have trading cards of just even Ron Wolf, uh, because he was the person who basically found every single person. I mean, he's the, part of the reason why you had Reggie White on the Packers. Oh, Reggie White was the great. You know who was the best on the Packers? Sterling Sharp. One of the greatest wide receivers who yeah. had to retire early. Ugh. Didn't want concussions. Not <coughs> dumb at all. I don't know if I blame him. I Brandon, blame him. how many deep, dark, abyss VHS cassettes would you <laughs> give this? Um, for what it is, I'm going to give it a solid three. Nice. I really like that fair without being mean. I mean, again, we're rating on what it is, not yeah, what it was. Exactly. Yeah. Matthew, how many deep, dark, abyss VHS uh, cassettes would you give this? I would have started there. I think I'm at a 3.5 now. As I keep sipping on it, it's really nice, mellow, soft. Um, it's a very silky body once you get rid of like that little bit of bitterness. So yeah, I'd say 3.5. Dan, how many deep, Dark the Abyss. VHS cassettes are you going to give this? That time uh, I threw in the so that everybody knows I'm talking about the movie. The, the Abyss. The Abyss, Abyss yeah. Okay. Um, I am going to go. I was going to go with 325. Um, I don't hate it. I'm getting a slight oxidation on it, but I really do like the like dark fruit characters. Yeah, I'm going to go 325 as well. 325 what? 
deep dark abyss vhs cassettes <laughs> yeah I, I feel like this beer definitely was like top notch when it was fresh and for seven years still not terrible like like i said this would be like really nice if you did like a dark chocolate baking thing with it like it would be really good especially like i feel like a ganache like a dark chocolate ganache with this and there would be you know what you should have saved this rebecca for fucking saint patrick's day next year but then it wouldn't be her guinness cupcakes i don't give a shit (laughs) i'm talking about what tastes good it is giving me nostalgia vibes though because this used to be like a hype beer Back in the day. I'm so. pretty sure. You know what? If I'm not mistaken, Garfield's over there in Harlem might still have one of these. <laughs> they have beers from 20 years ago, and they're still charging what the retail price would be today. That's insane. Yeah. Uh, all right. I think we got time for Una Mas. What are we having? I already called it. It's that lager, right? We're doing mm-hmm. that forbidden route. Yeah. Dan, hit me up with some water while Matthew tells us what we're about to drink. So this is done with by our friends Forbidden Root. It is a toasted marshmallow style black lager with vanilla and toasted oak called Panda Party. And is it like, a trash panda party or just a regular panda party? Panda, panda, panda. It's a normal normal panda, but trash pandas are pretty awesome. So are red pandas. Uh, it says we've updated a classic German style black lager with a rich but subtle touch of caramelized malt vanilla <laughs> and deeply toasted American oak chips. While evocative of campfire toasted marshmallows, it's also highly drinkable. What the fuck's evocative? They really missed the opportunity to call this a pastry Schwartz beer. <clears throat> I think the Germans Good. might have been a little pissed. And uh, it's 5.5% and this was done by the uh, Chicago Forbidden Root. See, this is how you should do it. You start way the fuck up high and end way low. That's the way you do it. You don't gradually work your way up. That's how you don't remember what's going on. You know what I mean? So I'm going to say this right now, and we'll find out if I'm right or wrong. I'm going to say this is my favorite beer of the night. There is no no response to that. You guys just look. This is a podcast. You guys can't just fucking look at me. Nobody sees it. We're not on YouTube. I raised my eyebrows. Matthew, you looked at me like... We are. Oh, uh-huh. oh, that was a head tilt like, where I'm like, it's not that I'm not going to enjoy it, but I'm like, are we going to taste this after a 15% beer? And yeah. Total- no, yeah. I mean, I just had some water. Feeling pretty good. I got this. Hey, man, that's like a real big pour there. It's mostly <laughs> hot. I just really liked how it sounded pouring. <laughs> ASMR, ASMR. There's someone peeing into a urinal. You're not doing anything. I know, he did a soft pour. That's like I, I didn't think like he wanted to. They call him Danny Soft Hands. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to call him Danny Soft Hands from now Isn't that what you call him? Hey, Soft Hands. That's hey, cool. everybody, Danny Soft Hands is back. Hey. You got to change your uh, handle. That no longer hip hops, your Danny Soft Hands. <laughs> Soft hands with smooth That's smooth your jazz. own. When we start doing the Patreons, that's going to be your own spinoff. Danny Soft Hands. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Danny Soft Hands. Just let you know, we're doing some soft beers tonight. Let me pour this for you. I do the soft pours. With I do the soft beers. pours yeah, with the a, soft you, beers. You take a drink. You yeah. made a face. You made a face. I did. Alexa, stop. Oh, boy. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Everything's fucked. <laughs> How many Alexas do you have down here? Oh, <laughs> no! What else fell? I got that. <laughs> I'm not cutting any of this uh, out. Or, wait, this is, yeah, this is why we did some of this out. Yeah, I already put it Summer in. of the Black Loggers. This is summer of the... I was wrong with what I said about earlier. <laughs> Good, not great. That's where I'm going with this. Um, you know, I'll, I'll start out. I normally throw it to you guys. Uh, but because I said I thought this was be my favorite beer of the night... Um... It's not bad. Yeah. There's smokiness to it. Uh, it's very light. I like, hate, oh, I hate it. You hate it? Yes. Yeah. I, it's you know when you said aqueous long long time ago when I started using it, it it, it kind of comes across as almost like watered down, man. Here's, well, it's, here's, you're with a black lager. I am. I am. I, and, the, and this is what I was like. You're, you're doing it after barrel aged stout. For sure. <laughs> but here's the thing. The reason I hate and don't dislike this is because when I first take a sip, you get that like roasty black lager flavor that's so good. And then it like is ruined by the marshmallow. So it's like 
gives you this hope of like a good thing and then it just like fades away. I'm not getting a bunch of. Yeah, I don't uh, really get marshmallow. marshmallow. I don't know how old I mean, this I is, but. I get like a vanilla. What is, who's got yeah. the candy? But that's like the marshmallow. Is there one. a date on there? Yeah. It yes. was like, it was last year, like last November. Canon 11 29 22. So it's a little under a year old. Like eight months. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which which the lager like I was like I think the lager's still holding up. I don't I think, yeah, I don't, I think the marshmallow's just turned into say, vanilla. Yeah, I don't think I get a lot of marshmallow. Actually I it's not my favorite beer of the night, but now that I've poured a little bit more and had some, it's a nice dark lager with then like a nice slight vanilla finish to me. Yeah, like my my mind was playing tricks on me because I was I'm still in like stout mode, but when I took a sip I, I had to remember like this is a lager, it's not a stout. Yeah. And I like it for what it is. Like yeah, it's not bad. A black lager with some adjuncts to it, and it's it's not bad. I, I think Dan's an idiot. No, I mean every, everyone's got their personal preferences. I and mean, Dan, in, I wasn't talking about the beer. In preferences. general, do you do you JK like Dan. black lagers? Yes, okay. I love like short beers. That's well, what I'm I mean, saying. I yeah, it, like the first note when it hits my tongue, I like, and then it just goes bad downhill. Yeah. I think for me, the biggest thing that I wish I had more is saying. Like and it says big bold marshmallows. Like yeah. I would, if you're gonna put that big of marshmallow, I want to be hit. Yeah, that's kind of what I was hoping for. That's why I felt like, oh, this was gonna be the one that I really like tonight. Punch me in the nuts and give Dan, me yeah. marshmallows. Because if you didn't, Dan, if you can't see punch me in the nuts. <laughs> if, you, if you didn't tell me this was adjuncted, I might not find. I would say there's a uh, weird sweetness to it. That yes, I can't, like a I lactose. Know, yeah, yeah. But to, uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. But to me, weird. there's a lot of lagers too that like. If they don't spend a lot of time lagering, you get kind of a sweetness on it. So, I mean, it smells like it smells like a roasty lager. It doesn't smell. I don't get. But I mean, I swirl it around and it just smells like beer. That smells like a lager. Yeah. Well, it's a nice, thin, easy drinking beer. After a it's lot not. Of- I mean, it, at first I was put off. I really was. I've now had more, and I, you're right. It was. I mean, coming off of those other beers, and I, I mean, you can only cleanse your, cleanse your palate so much. But having more of it, and more of it, and more of it, it's, it's all right. I, I like would it. really like to I think, taste. I would love it if they did the base beer of this without just the marshmallow. The, yeah, just the black yeah, lager. I think Dan, yeah. Dan would be on board for that too. Agreed. I really. Yeah. I, we should do a. We should do a dark lager episode for sure. Well, we have coming one coming up in November. I'm yeah, sorry, what's <laughs> one of our absolute favorite ones. Oh, which one's that? Life's Blood. Yes. And first Good. time ever we're submitting it, hopefully submitting it to GABF. Really? Mm-hmm. You guys will probably win something. We, we just... save someone so, so long as it's tasting. I hope you Tasting guys great. Because uh, it submit. is such a good beer, man. That's, uh... We're just waiting to get invited to the barrel tasting of Krampus. <laughs> you know what day it is. I don't know what day it is. It's the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. No, no, like when you get when you guys pull samples out and check it like midway through the year. Oh, I know that. Happens. No, I just want you guys. Then you just have to be there on a random morning at nine a.m. with no. Actually, no I just I just want you guys to come back here so we can have the shit show of an episode that we had last time. But you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna spread. We literally would have to spread everybody out. We can't sit at the bar. Or anymore. we could we could do it at um, like the production facility. Mmm, smart. As long as you got the task cam, things are okay. Brandon, how many panda bears are you giving this one, buddy? Um, Take it back. Hold on. Don't say shit. How many bamboo shoots are you giving this, buddy? Well, now I have to recalculate everything. (laughs) (laughs) Talking bamboo shoots, that's what a panda eats. They actually just eat bamboo. I don't know why I said shoots. (laughs) <laughs> How much bamboo are you giving this? This is going off the rails. Pandas would have been the dominant one in How this situation. How about this? How about this? How many marshmallows are you giving this one, buddy? Oh, now you're really changing shit up. <laughs> toasted or not toasted? What does it say in the fucking can? Is it toasted? It says toasted marshmallows. How many toasted marshmallows are you giving this? How many State Fox marshmallow mans are you giving this? Now, now how are they toasted? Um, I'm going like mm, two seventh. Wait. Two. Whoa. Is there actually marshmallows in this? Now that I'm reading it again. Yeah, it's dude. To toasted marshmallow style. style. Yeah. And it says black lager with vanilla and toasted oak. Welcome well, to, to the show, Well, to me, that, show, that means Dan. that it's obviously not marshmallows, but maybe nah, like I'm going, vanilla I'm, and some. I'm just going to throw it out there, by the way. I did not get much of it. Three, two, five, anything. Three, two, three, two five. five. Okay. Matthew, how many Stay Puft Marshmallow men are you giving this? Yeah, I would say three, two, five as well. For me, that's definitely like, I would drink it, especially like... 
a night tonight after a couple couple stouts, a couple other beers. A couple two tree. A couple two tree beers. Yanni try, Daniels, try new thing Sleepy yet. Daniel. What do we got, baby? How many state of marshmallows are we giving this? Two, two, five. Two, two, five. Yeah. I saw that. That might be there's, the lowest rating we ever had. There's promise with the black lager. I just wish they wouldn't have put vanilla. Sure. I don't like. I mean, I'm like anti vanilla in a lot of stuff except for really? stuff now. I'm a big. I'm a big IPAs. Fan of I can see that. Uh, there, there are certain vanilla IPAs that we can talk about this off mic. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go with. Uh, <laughs> three. It's, it's like flight of the bumblebees. Three mm-hmm. safe off marshmallow man. I think it's a good black lager. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of with Dan on this. I don't know if the vanilla is something that I needed in this beer. It's all right, but uh, not not my favorite. I, I go, you know, going off of what I thought I was going to be my favorite beer of the night. Real quick before we wrap this up, if you guys had to choose one beer tonight that you like the most, what would it be? We're going to throw it over to Danny first. Dimension of the time. Dimension of the time. Good choice. And any quick explanation of why you feel like that was the best one? You're your favorite. Um, we'll just like drinking it right now, yeah, because I brought it. Um, <laughs> brought it because it's me. hard to get, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it um, was tough, so it means it's good. No, I uh, spent a lot of money on it. <laughs> the the abyss had some oxidation on it, uh, but I liked the dark note, dark, dark fruit notes on that. And then the first one I liked the like tiramisu esque quality, but I just thought the other one was so balanced and well done. So, Brandon. I'm gonna agree with Dan. You agree with that dimensions? Yeah, because I, I just liked the the body, the mouthfeel, the the flavor profile was just so well balanced. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it immensely. So, yeah. Matthew, I have to agree with you guys. Same thing. Uh, I really liked the fact that it was maple bourbon barrels, where you just had this note of maple and the nose and just a little bit of that sweetness but it's really balanced with the the barrel and everything else i am in agreement agreement <laughs> <I'm saying> <laughs> agreement with you guys as well that was my favorite beer as well um i don't know i, I feel like my second one would be medusa i think are we all in agreement on that as well yeah. Medusa would be number two yeah. now i guess the hard one would be between panda party and abyss what goes third and what goes fourth I know for Dan. Abyss. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Abyss is third. Uh, what about you guys? Abyss or Panda goes third? It's a very t- tight time. I know we rated them slightly close on my Yeah. Um, but for what it is, uh, I think I would say Abyss. Okay. Maddie? Yeah, given that Abyss was seven years old, I think it was holding up for what it was. But I think that could be also the issue with Panda Party being eight, nine months old. Yeah. If that. Oh, sorry, please. That the marshmallow and vanilla uh, that we're all looking for is just looking for or not looking for. It, it feels like it's just missing that component and just might be I f- too old. I feel Wait, like because <laughs> we really do need to get video. I do feel like because I got a decent amount of black lager, I might, I think I am going to put the Panda Party above the, the Abyss um, only because I, I don't know. The, the abyss is the abyss. Well, is, there it is. The abyss is a good sharing beer. Like, you guys are done. In the panda party. I could have just fucking knocked back and been like, yeah, yeah, that was all right. But I had a beer and it's good. It's the end of the night. Um, all right. Well, I, I think that's a good uh, start to the summer of the stout. The dark night ends. Wait, is that what's the third? What's the third? Rises dark night. Yeah, it's the uh, Batman. The dark Batman night. Begins. The dark night rises. Batman begins. Dark night. Dark night rises. So we, we, this was already the dark night rises. So now it's just the Batman. We're Robert Pattinson right now. It's, well, year, it's year one. They need to go That's back. That's the next one. That's they the need next to go one. back. Can we just and fuck then Michael Keaton out of this whole no, thing? No, no, we'll, get, we'll go back to it. We'll go back to it. We'll, we'll get there. I'm just saying, we're at the Robert Pattinson one, which, by the way, I did really enjoy. Uh, Matthew, thank you so much for joining us again. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. You're uh, a nice dude, and I think uh, a lot of people like you. Well, thanks for having me. Anytime. Literally. Like, I, I said I'm going to keep texting you, and we'll just, we'll just keep throwing it out there. Yeah. Cool. All right, Danny, you got anything you want to say? Uh, no, I got nothing. Actually, real quick, Matthew, back to you. Uh, is there anything you want to say? Is there anything you, uh, about Old Irving you uh, want to throw out there, plug or whatever? Events are going to be at, things are going to uh, do. What's, what is this coming out? This is coming out, what's today's date? Today's the 10th. It's next week. Monday. This is the 10th? 
No. Yeah. 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 The 10th. So what's a week from now? 17th. 17th. What's going on? Well, we would have just been at more Beer Fest for the sixth anniversary. That's so helpful. Anyone who's Too there, bad. hopefully that you <laughs> enjoyed you were, it. If you were there, hope you had a fun time. Yes. Um, and then uh, we have a couple big things, but if anyone's coming to GABF, we'll be there. And then we'll also be at the Rare Beer Fest uh, for Pints for Prostates on the Friday. I think we'll bring you back on before then, so we can talk about that if you're interested. Yeah. And thank you for contributing to my block party. You are welcome. We love you guys. Love you too. Awesome. Danny, you got anything you want to say? Throw out there? Nothing? I got nothing. Uh, Hip-hop stuff? Nothing new? What's going on? Mm -hmm. What are we doing with the Run the Jewels thing? That's soon. We should do that soon. Whenever you finally want to come I'll start messaging you. (laughs) That's what we'll do. It'll be a big thing. Danny... Tony, together, we're going to do it. Run, Run the, the jewels. jewels. Brandon, you want to plug anything? <laughs> you, got, you got a side podcast coming up that you want to throw <laughs> out there at all? Yeah, I'm going to be doing uh, my fuck this shit, fuck that shit podcast where I just talk about fucking this shit and fucking that shit. So uh, tune in soon. When does that come out? Fuck it. No one knows. <laughs> Fantastic. I Wait, do it when I want to. <laughs> I can't. I honestly. I hope that's real. I hope you do I that. Want this yeah, I really want this. Yeah, that's, that's gotta be a thing. I do want everyone to have their own singular fifteen-minute show. That would be fantastic. Brandon, I love you, man. Love you too, bud. And thanks everybody for listening. And the person who on uh, July 9th decided to listen to seventy-one episodes here in Chicago. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And everybody else who keeps commenting. Not even that many hours in the day. Commenting. <laughs> Something's up. He's playing uh, on every speaker. Keep, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. And everybody else that keeps uh, you know in contact with us, liking the show and, and, and all the other shit. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. We'll see you guys next week. Adios. Goodbye. I'll finish this in. This has been The Malting Hour. Be sure to follow us on all social media by searching The Malting Hour and at themaltinghour.com. You can also follow us individually on social media. Brandon can be found on Instagram as bmdub81, on Twitter, bdub81, and on Untapped as bdub drinks beer. Tony can be found on Instagram and Untapped under Ace of Help Chicago, on Twitter, the Ace of Help Chicago. Clark can be found as Clarkowski on all three. Dan can be found on Instagram as hip underscore underscore hops and hip hops on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe, like, and rate the show on your preferred podcast listening platform. Until next time, cheers from all of us at the Malting Hour.